Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with a Spain news update. And Spain's number one fugitive has been arrested in Italy. But more about that in just a moment. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to people that supported the channel by buying merchandise. And a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your ongoing support. Now let's get into the news. And as I said, Spain's number one fugitive, former Catalan president Carles Puigdemont, has been arrested in Italy. As we can see here, Carles Puigdemont arrested in Sardinia by order of the Spanish Supreme Court. Former Catalan president Carles Puigdemont on the run in Belgium and subject to an international arrest warrant issued by the Supreme Court was arrested on Thursday in Sardinia, where the pro-independence leader had gone to attend several events this weekend, as confirmed by his lawyer, Gonzalo Boyer, and sources from Junts to El País. The pro-independence leader is being held in police custody at El Guedo Airport. The former president and MEP's entourage had detailed that Puigdemont had been approached by Italian police after arriving in Sardinia. He had travelled to the island first to take part in the Alpec International Adifolk, a meeting of popular culture, and then to meet with several Sardinian pro-independence mayors and municipal officials. So a big story there today, former Catalonian president, and as I said, Spain's number one fugitive, Carles Puigdemont, arrested in Italy. And obviously Italian officials don't want Mr. Puigdemont putting any pro-independence ideas into officials' minds there in Sardinia. So we'll see what happens with Mr. Puigdemont. Remember, this is not the first time that he has been arrested. I think he was arrested a few years ago in Germany, and he was then released, went back to Belgium, and has been living there ever since. So we'll see if Spain can get him extradited here to face the courts. Now Spain's King Felipe and his wife Queen Letitia are out and about again, and yesterday they travelled to the island of La Palma to offer their solidarity and affection to the Palmeros. Together we will help rebuild their lives, they said. King Felipe VI and Queen Letitia have sent a message of solidarity and affection to those affected by the volcano on La Palma during a visit to the island to see firsthand the ravages of the eruption. We have to do everything in our power to help these families, to guarantee their safety and also their tomorrow, although it may not be in the same place, said the monarch. Felipe VI said that both the beautiful island, which will continue to be a jewel, and the people of La Palma will surely move forward. Today they are in the hearts of all Spaniards, he stressed. So good to see the King and Queen of Spain showing their solidarity and affection to the people on the island of La Palma that have lost their livelihoods and their homes. And the latest on this is that the Canary Island government is busy buying up empty homes on the island to house people affected by the volcano eruption. Now keeping on the topic of the volcano eruption down there on La Palma, apparently a new type of tourism has emerged. And as we can see here, the eruption on La Palma awakens the phenomenon of volcano tourism. The eruption of the Cumbre Vieja volcano has caused more than 400 million euros worth of material damage, left hundreds of people homeless and unemployed, wiped out entire banana plantations, one of the island's main economic activities, and paradoxically, aroused the interest of many tourists on La Palma. The images of lava flows descending down the slopes of the Cumbre Vieja towards the sea while destroying everything in their path have aroused the curiosity of thousands of people who are calling hotels on the island as well as ferry services to try to get as close as possible to the volcano over the weekend. So thousands of people trying to get onto the island of La Palma to see the volcanic explosion and the lava flowing down the side of Cumbre Vieja. And obviously taking notice of the tourism minister, Ms. Maroto's words the other day, when she said that it was a good idea to visit the island and she encouraged people to visit the island and take advantage of the spectacle that is an exploding volcano. Now heavy rains around the country have again wreaked havoc in various autonomous communities. and They have caused flooding and major damage in Extremadura, Andalusia and the Balearic Islands. Heavy rains caused by the circulation of the Dana, isolated atmospheric depression at high levels, with greater intensity in the south of Extremadura, Andalusia and the Balearic Islands, have caused flooding in homes and businesses and power outages and road cuts. The state meteorological agency is keeping eight communities on alert on Thursday. There have also been numerous calls about problems on public roads, with streets and squares flooded, and even causing some vehicles to get stuck due to the accumulation of water on the roads. On the coast of Huelva alone, Emergencias 112 has managed more than 600 incidents due to flooding, especially in Isla Cristina, Lepe and Ayamonte. The Junta de Andalusia has activated Situation 1 of the emergency plan in this province due to the risk of flooding. This was announced in a tweet by the Andalusian president, 
Juan Ma Moreno. So more heavy rains or gota fria as it is known here in Spain causing damage to various places around the country. And is it just me or are these rains getting more intense here in Spain as the years go by? Because this is the third or fourth time this September that something similar has happened. Now the subject of pollution in some of Spain's bigger cities is making headlines today. And only seven of Spain's 80 largest cities would comply with the new WHO limits for nitrogen dioxide. The new air quality thresholds recently set by the World Health Organization pose a huge challenge for Spanish cities because the starting situation is not good. Only seven of the 80 most populated cities in Spain are below the new annual exposure limit for nitrogen dioxide recommended by the WHO in its guidelines. If the focus is raised to the rest of the European Union, the situation does not improve. None of the 27 member state capitals would now comply with the recommendation for this pollutant, which is closely related in cities to the combustion engines of petrol and diesel vehicles. So there we go, 73 of Spain's biggest cities not able to comply with the guidelines set out by the WHO when it comes to pollution levels. And if you thought there was a lot of pressure on to buy an electric car before here in Spain, get ready for more. Now Spain's Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez, aka Mr. Handsome, has visited New York and addressed the United Nations. And he has pledged to donate 30 million vaccines and has warned the UN that democracy is under threat. Pedro Sánchez's visit to New York and the United Nations General Assembly, the annual international event par excellence, was a sight to behold. The eruption of the Cumbre Vieja volcano on the island of La Palma reduced his agenda to a minimum. He barely stayed for 24 hours. The UN summit was marked by tension between China and the United States, France's clash with Biden's government over the contract to build Australian submarines, and many countries' commitment to a return to nationalism. Sanchez advocates multilateralism. Democracy is under threat, he said, calling for it to be defended as the only alternative to any totalitarian, exclusionary, and intolerant drift. So Sanchez addressed the United Nations yesterday, advocating multilateralism and saying that democracy is under threat, but unfortunately not many people stuck around to witness his speech. So he may be handsome, but he's not that popular. Now let's have a look at a summary of the health situation in Spain. We can see that the accumulated incidence rate is now down to 71. Daily COVID cases in Spain continue to fall. There are still 3,056 people hospitalized around the country with COVID, and there are 867 COVID patients still in ICU, unfortunately. When it comes to the vaccination campaign, we can see that 76.41% of the population are completely immunized against COVID here in Spain, and just under 80% of the population have received at least one dose. Now, there was an interesting article in the Guardian newspaper the other day, and very handy for people that are planning a trip to Spain, as readers of that newspaper chose some of their favorite smaller cities in this country. And as we can see here, the headline of the article, Warriors, Cathedrals and Carnivals, Spain's Best Smaller Cities Chosen by Readers. Medieval plathas, fortress-like film sets and seafood straight from out of the net feature in your pick of these lesser known destinations. And as we can see, they highlight cities like seductive Salamanca, Zamora, which is a city that I recently visited, the magnificent city of Segovia, which is about 100 kilometers north of Madrid, one of the jewels of Andalusia, breathtaking Ronda, one of my favorite cities in the north of Spain, Vigo, Tarazona, a place that I had never heard of but look forward to visiting soon, Tourism Mecca Toledo, Burgo de Osma, which is also in Castilla y León, Carnival City Cadiz down there in Spain south, and finally Medieval Trujillo in Cáceres, Extremadura. So definitely worth a visit to some, if not all, of those smaller cities pointed out by readers of The Guardian. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from previous videos. One here from Marta, Mia is simply adorable. Please tell us more about her. How did she end up living with you? How old is she? What is her favorite thing to do? Etc. Dog lover here. When we decided to retire in Spain, we did a lot of research on dog beaches. We then visited and chose our future town to be based on that. Ian, our little chiweenie, is looking forward to enjoying the waters of Castillon. And another similar comment from Maura. Hi Stuart, what a beautiful dog. A big wolf to Mia. Yeah, Marta and Maura, thanks for the comment. And as you can see, Mia is sitting behind me there on the couch. She has settled in quite nicely to her new home and also to that couch. She comes from the north of Spain, Santander, and belonged to a lady that is going back to her country of origin, Ecuador, and therefore needed a new home for Mia. And as you can see, the rest is history. She's one year old and she loves to go for a walk and chew my socks. And from what I've seen over the last week, because we've only had her since Sunday, she's a very pleasant little dog. So we're all really excited to have a new member of the family. One here from Layla, evening Stuart. The COVID law here in Spain states that no smoking in the street if you can't distance more than two meters on terraces 
I do believe three metres. However, never have I seen any law enforcement say anything to anyone re-smoking in the street whilst walking, nor to anyone on terraces where it is obvious the social distancing is not as they state. In my opinion, another farce read the rules of the virus. Yeah, Layla, thanks for the comment. Obviously referring to a question we saw the other day in the comment section, somebody asking whether or not you are able to smoke at outdoor seating areas at bars and restaurants here in Spain. I said I thought it depends on the autonomous community that you are in, because as we know, 17 autonomous communities here in Spain, 17 different sets of rules and regulations. But you seem to be saying that it is a nationwide law, so I'm not 100% sure. All I know is that when I was traveling around the country earlier in the summer, I went to Castilla y León, Castilla La Mancha, Extremadura, I saw people smoking at these areas. So I have no idea what the exact rule is, but you're probably right. If nobody enforces it, people take the P155. One here from John. Hi Stuart, there will always be these deniers, be it COVID or the Holocaust or the latest one to do the rounds, volcano deniers. Whilst I haven't heard of one yet, there is likely to be someone out there who will say Stuart from Spain Speaks does not exist that in fact you are a hologram. If you are, then future Star Trek movies need to all have Aussie accents as you're the best. Yeah, John, thanks for the comment and obviously referring to an article that we saw the other day that there is a new phenomenon here in Spain, volcano deniers, people that don't believe that volcanoes or volcanic eruptions are real. And you're right, there will always be people that deny things that are blatantly obvious. And when it comes to whether or not I exist or if I am a hologram, I'll let you guys decide. One here from Flamenco Oz, thanks as always Stuart, been watching you for years. Can't wait to be able to visit Spain soon from Sydney. Yeah, Flamenco Oz, thanks for the comment and thanks for being a valued member of the community. And that's the million dollar question. When will people from Australia be able to visit Spain again? And when will people from Spain, like me, be able to visit Australia? I have no idea, but hopefully people like Gladys Berejiklian, Scott Morrison, Dan Andrews and Mark McGowan are on the case and it's sometime soon. One here from Neil, that's good news. I'm sure that's the first time people in ICU has been under a thousand. Yeah, Neil, thanks for the comment and well spotted. And you're right, it is the first time in a long time that ICU occupation with COVID patients is below the 1,000 mark. I think it happened late last week or maybe earlier this week. And the figure as we saw today is now down to 867. So let's hope that it continues to go down and hospitals start getting back to normal. And finally, one from right away, volcano deniers, the bar lowers again. So hard to believe. I'm becoming a denier denier. Thank you for keeping this going, Stuart. One day surely WA will open again. Great to have your Australian Connection voice here. Yeah, right away, thanks for the comment and a big shout out to any other Aussies that are watching these videos here in Spain. I know that it's been a pretty tough time for a lot of Aussies here in Spain and around the world, not being able to get back home to see family and friends. But as I said a couple of minutes ago, hopefully that will change soon. And when it comes to people that deny the existence of volcanoes, I've only got one word for them, clowns. On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the video out as you normally do. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Sorry, we'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.